Hello, we're going to talk about the biomechanics of the thumb. Typically, the motions of the thumb are listed as flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, opposition, and reposition. The joints of the thumb are the CMC joint, or the carpo-metacarpal joint, the metacarpophalangeal joint, or the MCP joint, and the IP joint, which is the interphalangeal joint. So all three of those joints allow for flexion and extension. And the CMC joint alone, that bottom joint or proximal joint right there, allows for abduction and adduction, as well as some internal and external rotation, although there are some caveats to that. So one of the main points of confusion lies with the planes of the thumb. It's a little bit hard for students to learn uh, initially because the planes of the thumb do not line up with the planes of the other fingers. So the fingers, of course, flex through the sagittal plane and extend through the sagittal plane. And many books will state that the thumb flexes and extends through the frontal plane. So in anatomical position, hands would be at my sides, palms facing the head, but the motions would still look like this, and it would be roughly lined up with the frontal plane. Although if you look at uh, several different people and look at the angle of the thumb compared to the other fingers, it's probably anywhere from 60 to 90 degrees off of the other digits. So another way to look at it is to look at the specific planes of the thumb. So we have an infinite number of planes, and we have an infinite number of each of the three cardinal planes. So if we look at the sagittal plane, we really have an infinite number of sagittal planes. So the index finger would move through or along the sagittal plane of the index finger. The middle finger has its own sagittal plane, it moves through its sagittal plane. The ring finger has its own sagittal plane, and the pinky has its own sagittal plane. So we already have a separate but parallel sagittal plane for each of the four fingers, digits two through five. So it makes sense then that we can also name a sagittal plane for the thumb. So this would be the sagittal plane, or if I do this view, this would be the sagittal plane of the thumb then this would be the frontal plane of the thumb, frontal plane of the thumb. Then the nice thing about naming a plane for an individual body segment is that plane moves with the body segment. Then I have flexion and extension of the fingers through their respective sagittal planes and flexion and extension of the thumb through its respective sagittal plane. Likewise, I would have my abduction and adduction of the fingers through their respective frontal planes, although in this case, it would really be pretty much one common frontal plane. At least they move pretty close to along the same plane. Whereas the thumb would look like this for its frontal plane, or like that. So when I do abduction and adduction of the thumb here and here, is along its individual frontal plane. So then we have to look at opposition. So opposition is loosely defined as movement of the thumb to oppose the other digits or the other fingers. And it's usually listed as a combination of abduction, flexion, and internal rotation. That internal rotation comes from the same uh, standard that we define as internal rotation of the arm. So if my arm is like this, and I turn this way at the glenohumeral joint, that is internal rotation of the glenohumeral joint. So for the thumb, going that same rotational direction would be internal rotation of the thumb at the carpal metacarpal joint, or the CMC joint. But if I try to do that by myself, you'll see that there is very little to no internal rotation available in isolations, which mean in isolation, which means there's very little to no external rotation at the CMC joint of the thumb in isolation. However, if you watch me flex the thumb, 
you will see that it automatically goes into internal rotation to some degree. And if I go into extension, it automatically goes through external rotation. So flexion with internal rotation, extension with external rotation, they happen concurrently because of the shapes of the articular surfaces at the CMC joint. If I do abduction, I get automatic internal rotation again. And if I do adduction, I get concurrent external rotation. So really, if we simplify it that way, from anatomical position, or at least anatomical position of the hand, opposition is nothing more than abduction followed by flexion. That's it. The internal rotation they're talking about happens automatically with both abduction and flexion. So again, the opposition would be abduction of the CMC joint, then flexion at the CMC, MCP, and IP joints of the thumb. And if we look at it a little more closely, this is the joint of the thumb. I should say the CMC joint of the thumb right here and right here. And we can see the unique articular surfaces. So if I go through flexion, I get automatic internal rotation. If I go through extension, I get automatic external rotation. And if I go through abduction, I get automatic internal rotation. If I go through adduction, I get automatic external rotation. So to sum up, to understand the motion of the thumb a little bit more clearly, we can name individual planes for the thumb. We can give it its own sagittal plane, its own frontal plane, and I didn't mention it, but we could give it, of course, its own transverse plane, even though that transverse plane motion happens only with flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction. And then again, our opposition from anatomical position or a neutral position of the thumb is simply abduction with automatic internal rotation at the CMC joint, and then flexion at the CMC, MCP, and IP joints with additional automatic internal rotation at the CMC joint. And then to oppose the entire hand, of course, I just flex the other fingers. So I hope that clears things up, and I'll be back with more videos soon. Thank you.